can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. day comes and I find myself standing in the sun I can only imagine when all I will do is forever forever worship you I can only imagine yeah. I can only imagine celebrate his home going and it's, it's, I do a lot of funerals but most of them are the people I don't know and so it's always harder with somebody uh, not only that I know but I love so if I if I have some moments where I break you just you're gonna have to deal with it okay um, because we came here because we love you guys and we love Don and that's why we're here this morning so let's go ahead and let's pray father I know. 
us, that you're going to walk with us. Your word reminds us over and over again that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. And so, Father, we lean heavy on you uh, this afternoon as we think about Don and what he meant to us. And so, God, I pray that you would just give us grace and mercy in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I don't come with glib answers because these things are tough and they're hard and they're difficult. Physical death is inevitable for all of us. And, and it's always met with a little fear and, and, and just a, a little bit of dread. But you know, the scripture says something pretty curious. It says in Psalm 116, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. And, you know, to us, death with our limitations, death never seems under any circumstance to be beautiful or precious. Um, but when God looks at life, he looks at it from an eternal perspective. And we see such a limited perspective, a limited view of what death really is. And so in our grief, I want us to turn to God because really that's the only place we can find any comfort is with him. Ecclesiastes 7, 2 says, it is better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting. For death is the destiny of every person. The living should take this to heart. In other words, God says it's better to go to a funeral than a party. And the reason he says that is because we should take this to heart. Because we're all going to end up at a place where we're going to have to deal with death. And it's a reminder for us about what, what life's really about. And so I think there's a couple of reasons, and I want to go through a couple of them. First, we're here to celebrate the life that God gave to Don, to, to remember his uniqueness. As sad as it is, he, his obituary is, he was 79 years old. He, he, he had a lot of good years. The son of late PJ and Ruby Cobb Gomez, he was born April 21st, 1944, in the Stevens County, Georgia. He lived here most of all of his life. He's a veteran of U.S. Air Force, employed by Cobb Roofing until he lost his mind and started driving a school bus. <laughs> so, and he did that for 13 years, so he had a lot more patience than I thought he had. Um, in addition to his parents, he was preceded in death by his four siblings, Dale, Richard, Michael, and Marilyn Gomez. Um, you know, Don, to me, is Uncle Don, and growing up, he's kind of like a superhero to me. You know, any anybody who is a champion go-kart racer is like the coolest thing to a young boy. And his house was full of trophies for racing go-karts. And I always, when Dad, Daddy brought us go-karts, and you know, I would love to pretend to be Uncle Don. Although Daddy says Don kept blowing the plugs out of the motors because he would never let up on the gas. Um, but then he got tired of go-kart racing and started fishing. And he was good at fishing. His house was full of fishing trophies. Everything that Don chose to do, he could be good at it if he wanted to. Um, and I would always spend the night up there, so I, I had a lot of uh, special moments up there. Of course, we got in a lot of trouble with Jody, didn't we? Don would have to stomp in in the middle of the night and he'd scold us. And he wouldn't have any clothes on. And he would scold us, and that scared me to death. <laughs> But you know, one of my favorite stories with Don for me personally is we were at Granny and Grandpa's one Christmas and all the kids were on the porch and we were standing out on the porch and somebody, something comes around the corner of the house with a sheet on going, whoa, and everybody runs in the house. And we all the kids take off screaming and I'm trying to go in the door and my older brother so kindly holds the door where I can't get in the <laughs> house. So the, I didn't know what to do, so I picked up the broom that Granny swept the porch with, and I whacked the ghost in the face. And all of a sudden, the ghost says, wait, wait, this is Uncle Don, it's Uncle Don. And I busted his nose pretty good. He still loved me after that. I don't think I was his favorite, but he, but he still loved me. You know, we all have our favorite stories about Don. And in moments like these, it's those stories, and we remember those stories that, that are so dear to our hearts, and those good times that we can we can have. But you know, make sure you tell those stories. Make sure over the next couple of months, you, you remember those stories about God. You remember them and you tell them to each other, right? Because um, it's a time for us to remember. That's why we're here. We're remembering all the things that God meant to 
us and, and all the ways he made us laugh. The second is the time for us to say goodbye for now to God. Uh, hard as it is, a service like this helps us with the process of letting go. And you didn't hear me say forget. And you didn't hear me say get over, right? Because we don't forget and we don't get over. Um, but our bodies are not made to last forever. Have a short journey on this side of eternity with these bodies and they wear out and we deal with a lot of pain as we get older I didn't realize that so after 50 things start hurting and days go by fast and all of a sudden your kids are in college I'm waiting for that to go really fast so they're out of college but it goes fast doesn't it Don had a, a rough last couple of years he really did and he called me several times Every time he saw me, he wanted to know if I would preach his funeral. And I told him, quit talking about it. And every time he said, I said, Don, quit talking about me preaching your funeral. I don't want to talk about my uncle dying. And I said, if you can get somebody better, I can't sing or dance. You can find somebody better to do the funeral. But he kept asking me, and I, I told him, I said, Don, you know I love you. You know I'm going to preach your funeral. But he always asked. And the pallbearers would probably say the same thing. He made sure that he had it covered. But he would also call me and he would, in the last couple of years, and he would want to talk about God. And he wanted to figure this out. And, uh, and one, one, of the, one of the times he says, David, I don't, I don't know if I can even talk to God. I've been so bad. And I said, well, Don, they've got a club for that. It's called the Human Race. And we've all made mistakes. The Bible says we've all sinned and fallen short of what God's standard is. And uh, I said, so welcome to the finally figured it out. And so he wanted to know what it meant to be a Christian, and I walked him through it. And, and, I, and I, I tried to have several conversations with him. And Don finally told me, he says, one time I talked to him, he said, you know, all the, the scriptures you gave me, he says, he says, I really want to trust God. I believe what the Bible says about Jesus. And he says, I want, I want to trust him, and, and I've asked him to forgive me. Don had some kind of sense that he wasn't going to be here long. He called me Monday, and he says, David, I know that God's got me. He says, but I'm scared. And I said, Don, if you are you sincere in your heart that you've asked God to forgive you, the Bible says you, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you confess him with your mouth, and you're saved. And I said, if you've done that and you sincerely mean it, then you're going to be okay. You're going to have to trust God for this. You're going to have to have faith that God's got you. And I gave him some scriptures. One that says, once Jesus has us in his hand, nothing can snatch us out of his hand. And Cassie, I think you told me after that phone call, he was in peace. He was in complete peace. Um, and I think if Don was here, and he could tell you now that he waited too late. He said, I've waited too late. I said, it's never too late. Because I think he understood Ecclesiastes 3, 2, when he knew there's a time to be born and a time to die. And it's not easy, but Don knew it was, it was his time to go. I don't know how he knew it, but he did. But I'm reminded when I think about Don, and, and just kind of saying, I was thinking about this story of the John Quincy Adams, our sixth president. When he was 80, 80 years old, he was walking down the street in Boston, and one of his friends came up and slapped him on the back and said, how was John Quincy Adams today? And John Quincy Adams turned to him and he said, I'm fine, sir, fine, but this old dwelling that John Quincy lives in is not so good. The underpinning is about to fall away, the thatch is all gone off the roof, and the windows are so dim, John Quincy can hardly see out anymore. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't surprise me before winter is over if he had to move out. But as far as John Quincy Adams goes, he's never been better. See, with that, he walked on down the road because I think he understood without a shadow of a doubt that John Quincy Adams was not just his body. That he recognized a temporal, physical man is on the outside, but there's a spiritual, eternal man on the inside. The flesh is died and it's buried, but the spirit lives forever. So Don's no longer struggling to breathe. 
He's not in pain. He is not in fighting for his life anymore. He's at peace. And he's having the best time of his life. And we talked earlier, there's a whole lot of people that met him at the gates. I've got a daughter that's on the welcoming committee. the question, am I ready to die? Am I ready to do what Don has done? See, Don knew his end was coming, so he decided to get ready. And when it comes right down to it, this service is really more for the living than it is for Don. It's for you. John's 4.14 says, what is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. We don't have as long as we think. We're not promised tomorrow. Proverbs tells us this fool that says, oh, tomorrow I'm going to go do this, and tomorrow I'm going to accomplish that, because we really don't know what tomorrow will bring. We don't know how fragile our lives are sometimes. So predictable. you're going to run into a lot of firsts. Fine, Jody. There, you're going to run into a lot of firsts. A lot of first days you're going to experience without your dad. Because you've had him your whole life. You've had him a long time. And so tomorrow's going to look different. And Thanksgiving's going to look different. And Christmas is going to look different. And that's when you're going to need your family and your friends to be with you. To help you. To call you. And what I would tell you to the family and friends is don't be afraid to, to speak to them about Don. So many times when people <coughs> pass away, our family and friends are scared to mention their name because we're afraid we're going to cause hurt. Well, surprise, they're already hurt. And you calling them and saying, I miss Don, or how are you doing, or taking them and having a cup of coffee and just saying, how, how are you dealing with the loss of your husband, your dad, your grandpa? They need that. They want to hear Don's name mentioned because the worst thing is for us to think we forgot and we have. So in the days to come, they're going to need your support. So I hope you I hope you get that support. I'm going to be praying for you and you can always call me. Always do. So I want to pray, and when I get done praying, we're going to listen to a song to close us out. And Don wanted you know specifically to listen to the words of the song. Uh, it's going to be played. He said, song might fool you, but it's, it's, he said, the words are different than what you think. So he wants you to listen closely to the words, but he wanted this song. So when I pray, we're going to play that and we're dismissed. Okay. God, we do praise you for your presence. God, we do praise you that you are here with us. We do praise you that you give us this time to stop and to think about what a great life you gave Don and how he made us smile. He was a bright spot in our lives at times, Father. We, we know he wasn't perfect. None of us are, God. But we just thank you that you allowed us to have our lives intersect with his. And God, in the days ahead, I pray that you would remind us. Um, remind us not only of your love, but remind us of him and his love and, and all the good things that he did for us, Father. And so today, I pray for this family. I pray that you would be with us, God, that you would uh, walk beside us. Hold us close when we're in pain. And, Father, help us to have smiles and remember all the good things, Father. And uh, we love you, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Maybe tomorrow.